good day this is dr cool auto fix today again i have a very interesting edition which uh, i kind of want to show you guys uh, pre prior to what brought this video here is why does my discharge line got freezing why does my discharge line that freezing either the discharge line or the suction line okay from technical standing point I'm gonna be giving you guys the tip which uh, I'm gonna be using to resolve this problem today I have it on a module and uh, I'm seeing a lot of things that is going a little bit crazy right here. So a lot of you guys who have this kind of problem are going to be going, oh, what's going on with my car? Look at me right there, it's freezing. What is going on? And I'm going to tell you guys how to be able to solve this problem today. If you have encountered this problem before, you've seen it's freezing. That's the suction line there. And that's the discharge line. So there are a couple of things that can actually make it. If suppose yours is this one that is freezing up. Or probably it's a suction line that is freezing. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to be able to solve that problem. That's what you have. Wow, inside is as cold as mad. And uh, I kind of like, like it, you know, since I bought this car, it's been quite a while that I did it, that actually, uh, I haven't got the AC fixed before. So this is the first time I'm getting the AC working. If you look at it right here, let me try to create some shade. You can see it right in low, right there. And I'm uh, setting it to be pointing at the driver face and the speed is just at the middle so now let's get back to the let's get back to the hood let me tell you how to be able to solve this problem if you have this problem there is a lot of things that can actually cause it first is poor air okay over here you can see right there oh I can still see right there So here at my suction side, I think when you have this kind of problem, there might so now you can see that the okay. The first thing I want you to do when you have this kind of situation here. I just created this scenario so I can be able to lecture you guys. The first thing right here, if you look at my pressure gauge set right there, you can see that the refrigerant right here is pretty much than it's supposed to. And the car can feel that. Right there, so you can see that the pressure is higher than it's supposed to. So I want you to reduce the amount of refrigerant that you have inside the system when you're troubleshooting this kind of a problem. If that doesn't solve it, then I'll be right back. Okay, right inside right now, I could actually tell. That there is a lot of air coming through here, but it's not as cold as I expected. So I am confident there is a moisture inside this system and within that region where the moisture is that is where it's actually uh, kind of freezing and wouldn't allow the allow the liquid refrigerant to pass through it so I'm gonna put on the AC off and let it uh, cycle for some moment now let me get back there sometimes also 
a sticky expansion valve or a blocked uh, orifice tube can actually cause it. Now shut the system down and waiting for the system to equalize. You can see the compressor has stopped. I just shut the system off and the fan has stopped. Seriously, Ford put a magic on this car, guys. Okay, if you have experienced yours having this kind of issue, maybe like this, there's every chance that the space between your shaft is too bad and it's gonna get the clutch coil burn. So it's gonna increase the space right there. Now quickly, I'm gonna turn it back on. I'm gonna get that. Get it back on. Because I don't want that clutch coil to burn. I've actually given a tutorial about this before. The gap between the clutch and the pulley has to be very reasonable and if it is too much it's a problem if it is small it's a problem so let's go ahead and look at the suction line again the discharge line and see if it is still freezing as it was previously wow right there now let me take you guys to my gauge you can look at it right there it's going crazy so system overcharging can cause that freezing right there because the refrigerant is not flowing as it's supposed to inside the system is too much so right now I'm going to be reducing this and take it all the way to around 150 that should be just fine because the next moment is gonna start freezing up right there again so you remember what I told you poor airflow is gonna cause it moisture inside the system is gonna cause it what I'm talking about poor airflow is going to be poor airflow across the uh, evaporator. Then system overcharging can actually cost it also. And as a result, it's going to be having a poor cooling performance. So right now, what I'm going to be doing right now is that I'm going to shut this guy down. As you can see, the compressor is still on. I'm going to shut this guy down, then go back there and see what I'm gonna do. So when I reduce it, I'm gonna show you guys the difference when the system is working very healthy and when it's uh, overcharged. Because I can see right there, you can see my compressor, the pressure line uh, reacting right there. I don't wanna get it blown out, so I'm gonna shut the system down right now. Although it's still cold inside, but it doesn't want the squeeze. The juice doesn't want the squeeze, so I gotta, gotta let it go until when I get the refrigerant because uh, I actually obviously honestly I didn't look at the chart before I started uh, getting this uh, system charged up so I'm certain that I've added to it way a little bit over than it's supposed to so but I'm actually doing it in order to be able to show you guys what happens when you overcharge a system for old models so I'm gonna shut it off Then I'm gonna shut the fan off. Then I'm gonna shut the car down. So, in some cases here, for the older system, okay, I'm still watching it to see it's gonna equalize now. I'm getting the realistic reading that I'm supposed to have got in the first place. Here you can see the static pressure. The atmospheric condition right now is cool, there is not too much sunshine, so when there is not too much sunshine, I am not expecting any static pressure above 100 psi G on the high side as much as on the low side, so I'm pretty much sure that's the second confirmation that there is more than uh, enough uh, refri uh, refrigerant inside the system, 
then the last one for most of you who stayed down to this very point is going to be restriction so i'm going to be needing to replace that if uh, expansion valve is not letting enough uh, liquid get inside the system the way it's supposed to so there is a uh, poor cooling right there and uh, i'm having a lot of uh, freezing right there on the discharge which is not supposed to because when there is a restriction inside then it creates some sort of a back effect to start cooling even before getting down to the evaporator but as for this very moment right now because uh this system right here i do reduce the fan level down to the lowest up to like one and why the system is really cooling the way it's supposed to i'm expecting the system to do a short cycling and it's not doing short cycling so within this very case if yours is not doing any short cycling when you reduce the fan almost to the lowest then there is every possibility for the liquid line to start freezing up then also if suppose it's not doing short cycling and there is little to no air right there on the uh, suction uh, little to no uh, air across the evaporator core then automatically it's gonna start freezing up on the suction line now repeat if suppose maybe for most of you who have old model cars maybe like say 93 models and uh some of those systems some of them could be having a electrical fault where the system the the thermistor in the evaporator is not instructing the ecu on what is actually the activity going on on how cold the evaporator is and if the ecu have no idea to be able to create a short cycling uh, procedure then the return line the return liquid refrigerant that's supposed to be creating some sort of uh, a some sort of uh, wetness on the suction line is going to increase more and when it increase more what's going to happen then that is why you're going to have a situation where the suction line start freezing up right but right now as you see as i show you in the video is actually the discharge that's actually freezing which i actually told you is a restriction a restriction is possible moisture inside the system is possible because i realized i actually put a vacuum inside this, out of this system but i never re replaced the accumulator you can look at it it's so old right so you need a replacement so guys now that you know how to troubleshoot and fix a car that uh either the suction line is freezing up or the discharge line is freezing up kindly subscribe to my channel as a way to support me to say thank you for the bringing you this permission free of charge that's gonna save you a lot of money because it's not even just about you knowing it there are a lot of mechanic out there who don't understand how this thing works and who will not understand what is going on so you're gonna end up changing one part to another and you don't even end up solving the problem but right here I just give you the whole a fact right there and don't be right on you so you can be able to use it and solve your problem so if you have any further question regarding AC or any car problem car related issue you can drop me an information right here sorry a comment below this video description I'm gonna catch you guys later this is Dr. Cool Face bye for now